Hi everyone, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about small agents by Hugging Face. So Hugging Face has launched a new agent framework called Small Agents. I thought it's a very interesting framework and I wanted to make a quick tutorial on this. So in this video, we will try to understand what exactly are small agents and how you can create some simple agents using this new library. So let's get started with it. What are small agents? As mentioned, it's an open source AI agent framework by Hugging Face. It's released just a month back in December 2024. But around this idea is to simplify creation of powerful AI agent frameworks. And they also mention that the entire core framework is only in thousand lines of code. So if you look at frameworks like uh, Crew AI, Autogen or something, they are very, very heavy frameworks. But small agents claimed to be a very small framework for that matter. And it is just built for simplicity and rapid development. So these are some of the bullet points that you want to know about small agents. And then uh, what are some of the key features that are present in this particular library? So as with many of the agent frameworks, even small agents supports different LLM integrations starting from Hugging Face, OpenAI, Langchain and so on. And it has first class support for code agent with secure execution. So this is something that was interesting to me. So you can actually create a code agent within Hugging Face without having to input a code interpreter separately. So we will also see some examples where you can understand this in detail. And one more interesting thing about uh, this library is that it is uh, very well integrated to uh, Hugging Face Hub. So you can load any spaces and use them as tools or you can directly link it with Gradio as well. So there are a bunch of different features that are present in uh, this library, which will make the creation of A agents very easy. So what will we do in, in this particular video? So what we will do is we will try to do a basic setup of uh, a small agent. Uh, we will use light LLM to show you how you can make it work with any LLM. Then we will look into some tool calling. We'll just take a simple tool and we will also create a react agent with it. And then we, I will also show you how you can create custom tools and create a customer support agent. And then we will end with how you can create a Gradio UI integration for your small agent. So with that being said, let's get into the code that I will be using for small agents. So the links to this code will be available in the comments. So you can open the code and run it along with me if you want. And the first step is to, uh, I'm just importing warning filters because there might be a lot of warnings that you get. So let me just run this. And in the second step, just install small agents. So I've already installed it. So it's showing requirement satisfied for me. So, but you might have to wait for a couple of seconds for it to be installed. And one thing that I am doing for this library is I'm going to use open router, which will make it very easy to do use different LLMs, right? And so you don't have to do a lot of setup to shift between different uh, LLMs that way. So I'm just saving open router API key in my environment. And since DeepSeq is one of the most popular open source models these days, so I thought why not work with DeepSeq model instead of just using GPT models or any Anthropic models. So this is how you can set up a very simple code agent using small agents library. So you can just import code agent and light LLM model. And this is how you define an LLM with using light LLM. So just change the API base to open router and just mention the model that you want. So this uses DeepSeq v3. And in the next step, you can just uh, call the code agent and assign it to a model. So in the very first step, I don't, I'm not adding any tools as you can see. I just want to show you the power of code agent. So the code agent uh, comes ingrained with code execution. So you don't have to add any separate tool. So it's already a tool in itself. So these are the questions that I'm running. So I'm just asking the agent to throw two dice and tell me what number you got. So let's say if you run the same query with an LLM, uh, it will just uh, give some number or maybe it can't actually randomize it. So, but when you actually run this agent, it is actually going to simulate uh, throwing dice and it will give you a number. So let me run this and show you how that works. So throw two dice and tell me what number you got. As you can see, it is executing a code directly. So for the die one, it is generating a random integer and then it is generating a random integer for this. And we are getting an output is equal to 12. So this way, whatever query that you are giving it, 
So if it requires code, it's automatically going to use it. So this also comes in very handy when you're doing some maths calculations or something. So let me comment this and if you run something like this. So let's say you want to run a maths calculation. So let's say I'm giving it some big number 223 raised to the power 314. So let me run this. So LLMs are generally bad at math and you will probably get a wrong output when you are using an LLM simply. But when you are using a code agent, it is automatically writing a query for you and then it is executing. So you are more likely to get right output wherever code is required. So this is how you can use a code agent uh, in this environment. So what if you want to create a react agent using small agents? So that is what we will try to do. So if you're not familiar about react agent, react agent is nothing but reasoning and action engine. So whenever you ask it a question, the agent will divide your question into multiple steps and depending on what all tools it has, it will decide which tool to use when. So currently uh, what I'm doing is I'm using the same model as before, but I've added a DuckDuckGo search tool. So whenever I'm asking a query, so if it requires a uh, usage of this tool, it will actually use it. And then uh, it already has access to code agent. So it will also run code whenever it is required. So the question I'm giving uh, to the agent is, fetch the agent uh, age of Tom Hanks and multiply it by 10. So if you think about logically, about it logically, it involves two steps. So the first, it has to search internet uh, to get age of Tom Hanks, and then it will probably use a calculator to multiply it by 10. So multiplying by 10 is very simple. It might or might not use calculator, but if it's a complex sum, it will surely use. But let me run this and see if it is actually working or not. That we got. Uh, as you can see, the first step that it is doing is to, it is doing a web search uh, for Tom Hanks age. And these are all the results that it got. And it has fetched the age from this particular response. So it has got the age to be 67. And then it is executing a code where uh, it is just uh, taking Tom Hanks age, and multiplying it by 10, and it is giving us the answer. So in this, it involved two steps, two logical actions. First is to do the internet search and then is to use the calculator tool. So similarly, you can add multiple different tools to it and see how this agent is performing. Uh, in the next step, I, what I want to show is how you can create a simple customer service agent. So whenever you're creating a customer service agent, uh, you will you might need some custom tools or connectors. So earlier with the examples that we have seen, we have used predefined tools, but if you want to design your own tool, so you can do it like this. So I'm keeping it very simple. I'm not using any external data sets or something, but uh, this will illustrate how you can do that as well. So the first of all, the things that I'm doing is I'm defining a tool to get product info. Uh, where it has three different products, uh, the names of the products and their prices in stock. I'm creating a tool for get order status where you can just enter the order number and you will actually get uh, uh, the delivery dates. And you also have a tool for create su customer support. So then uh, when I'm creating my support agent, so I'm actually putting all these tools together, product info, get order status and create su customer support. So whenever I'm asking any query to this agent, the model will be intelligent enough to understand which tool to use when, and it will give me a right answer most likely. So currently, as you can see, or let us try to see if we can get order status. So what if I want to find the order status of the order 001? So that is the query that I have. So let me run this code first. And the first question is, when can I expect order 001 to be delivered? So let me run this that it is doing is to uh, understand that this is the function that it has to use and it is automatically writing a query and then it is giving us a delivery date which is uh, 10th Jan uh, 2025. So let us cross check the date so that looks right. So out of all the three tools it automatically decided which tool to use and uh, directly fetch the delivery date from us. Let me ask one more query. In this query, what I'm doing is, I'm asking it to give details of uh, product 001 and I'm asking how much time does it take to deliver it. So let me run this so that we are getting in this. First of all, it is using the product ID to fetch the details of it. So the details are, uh, it is a Bluetooth earbud, uh, which the price is around $100 and the stock is around 50. And I have also added a question 
to understand what is its delivery time. So if you look at the functions or the data that we have, this tool does not have any mention about the delivery time. So what agent has done automatically is that, so since it does not have idea of what is the delivery time of product one, so it has automatically used the second or maybe the third tool, which is support ticket. So it is creating a customer support ticket and it's using a customer ID and it's created a customer support ticket. So in this, it is actually using two tools and it's automatically deciding which tool to use when. So this is how you can create a simple customer agent using uh, small agents. So the best part that I find about uh, small agents is that generating a UI for agent is very, very simple and it's only a one line code. So let me show you how that is done. So this is the image. Uh, so this is the code. So what you need to do is you just take your agent and put it into a uh, Gradio UI. So let us see what our agent does. So this is the support agent that we have created. So just insert this into Gradio UI and you will have a UI where you can chat to the agent. So my, uh, the name of my agent is support agent. So let me just change it to support agent and I'm just launching a UI for it. So you can see we have a chatbot for our agent and let me ask the same question. So this is the UI and this is the question. So I'm asking when will the order be delivered? So let me press enter. It's actually thinking to itself that it needs to retrieve order to 002. It's writing its function, it's running the Python tool and it's also fetching us the data. So that is how simple it is to create a UI for small agents. All you have to do is to insert the agent within the Gradio UI and you can get the UI and you can also get a local URL and you can also deploy it as a hugging face space. So uh, this is a brief overview of small agents. Explore the library and try to build some AI agents yourself. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe Build Fast with AI.